By now, many of us know it's important to carpool, turn off the lights, and use public transportation whenever possible. But do you know why this is so important? Here's a story to explain. Meet Coco the Coccolithophore and Terry the Pteropod. They're plankton that live in Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary, but they both have family members who live all throughout the global ocean. This zooplankton and phytoplankton spend their days getting big and strong so they can support the ocean food web. Coco likes to spend time closer to the surface of the ocean so she can absorb energy from the sun and produce oxygen. Did you know that phytoplankton produce about half of the oxygen we breathe? Terry spends his days down low in the ocean, hiding from predators such as salmon and other fish. During the night, he floats closer to the surface where he can eat and grow strong. Here's Kevin Johnson, a graduate student researcher at the University of California at Santa Barbara. So the daily life of a pteropod, I would say, is uh, on our coast, is going up and down and up and down in the water column. So at night, they come to the surface and they're right at the top of the water and they create these big mucus nets and they literally excrete this net into the water column and it sits there and it floats and it's trying to catch anything it can. If it's phytoplankton, so little, little pieces of uh, algae that are floating around, or if it's diatoms, which are a different type of algae, they're trying to eat it and as soon as something comes into that mucus net, it pulls it in and kind of slurps it up and eats that up and turns it in, and that's its food. But then as soon as the day comes and the sun comes out, they, uh, they pull all that in and they sink down deep and they're, they're kind of like little shells, so if you, little rocks, because if you watch the videos that I'll share with you guys, you can see them just dropping super, super quickly. And what they do is when the sun comes up, they drop as far down the water column as they can go so that fish don't see them. One evening, while Coco and Terry are floating near the surface of the ocean, Cece the sea turtle swims by and notices that these two aren't looking so good. Are they sick? She wonders. She notices their shells are both looking a little thin. Cece is one of the oldest turtles in the ocean. She remembers a time when pteropods and coccolithophores had shells that were thicker and stronger. Shells are made of a substance called calcium carbonate, or CaCO3. Here's Deborah Iglesias Rodriguez, a researcher at the University of California at Santa Barbara, to tell us more. So coccolithophores make um, very strong, very resilient uh, type of chalk. Okay. So it's, it's more resilient to dissolution. And um, pteropods make a different type of chalk, which is um, more uh, susceptible to dissolution. Okay. And I'm talking about dissolution because the oceans are becoming more acidic, yes. if you like. So um, if you imagine a piece of chalk, you know, in acidic conditions, it, it will dissolve slowly. Uh -huh. So in coccolithophores, it will take longer for that to dissolve. And in pteropods, it will be, um, that will happen more quickly. Okay. And pteropods, um, so pteropod, pteropods are very vulnerable to, to um, climate, one of the consequences of climate change, which is yeah. ocean acidification. So, um, so we are concerned about, you know, how pteropods are going to do, how coccolithophores are going to do. Shells weaken when seawater becomes more acidic. How did this happen to Coco and Terry? You see, our ocean absorbs about one-third of all the carbon dioxide, or CO2, in the atmosphere. And while regular CO2 is a normal life process, the rampant CO2 from burning fossil fuels like oil and gas for energy is building up and changing the chemistry of the ocean. When rampant carbon dioxide enters the ocean, it dissolves and forms carbonic acid, this changes the ocean chemistry by reducing the amount of carbonate ions, which are the building blocks for animals with calcium carbonate shells or skeletons. The lack of building blocks makes it difficult for calcifying sea animals to build and maintain their shells. This affects Coco and Terry, but also affects other creatures such as oysters, clams, sea urchins, corals, and other plankton. Not only do phytoplankton produce oxygen, they also are important because they're the base of the food pyramid. This includes the seafood supply that humans rely on. So you can see how plankton are really important. They help support the entire ocean food web. But what if you could change this? You may already know some individual methods of reducing your carbon footprint, like carpooling, using public transportation, and reducing energy use, like turning off the lights and turning down your heat. But there are other means of helping Coco and Terry. This includes eating less red meat, buying locally grown food, including sustainable seafood, and finding out more about local clean, renewable energy initiatives such as wind and solar. And although you can't vote yet, you can advocate for politicians with climate-friendly views. 
You can write letters to your government leaders and representatives, letting them know what you think and how you feel. These are all great ways to help, and if you put them to use, we can make a true difference before things get worse for Terry and Coco. Will humans change their ways to protect our ocean's inhabitants and improve life on our planet, or will Terry and Coco meet an early demise? It's up to each of us to decide and start working together.